worship today. In Psalm 40 it is written, The Lord has placed a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Would you join us in singing that song of praise to our God, singing hymn 35, Praise ye the Lord, the Almighty. Let us pray. We praise you, eternal God, because your mercies are fresh every morning and your faithful love is steadfast forever and ever. Yet our failings, sin, and wanderings from your purposes and your guidance happen daily and hourly. In these moments of silence, Lord, hear us imploring your forgiveness of us from the ways of thought, word, and deed that we have bent and fractured the good life you create and bestow. Lord, hear us now as we pray silently to you. O great physician, heal us in body, mind, soul, and relationships individually and together, and lead us for serving you in the wisdom and spirit of Jesus Christ. Friends, let us hear and share with gladness the blessed news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. hear God's word as read from the book of Numbers in the Old Testament, chapter 12, verse 1 through 5, and then 11, and then 13 through 16. Now while they were at Hazaroth, Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Cushite woman who had married for he had indeed married a Cushite woman. And they said, Has the Lord spoken only through Moses? Has he not spoken through us also? 
and the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses was very humble, more than anyone else upon the face of the earth. Now suddenly the Lord said to Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, Come out, you three, to the tent of meeting. So the three of them came out. Then the Lord came down in a pillar of cloud and stood at the entrance of the tent and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forward. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and then he departed. Now when the cloud went away from over the tent, Miriam had become leprous, as white as snow. And Aaron turned towards Miriam and saw that she was leprous. Then Aaron said to Moses, O oh, my brother, my leader, do not punish us for a sin that we have so foolishly committed. And Moses then cried to the Lord, O oh God, please heal her. But the Lord said to Moses, Let her be shut out of the camp for seven days, and after that she may be brought in again. So Miriam was shut out of the camp for seven days, and the people did not set out on the march until Miriam had been brought in again. After that, the people set out for Hazareth, and they camped in the wilderness of Paran. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the current historical period of the COVID-19 virus and economic crises, I'm wondering when and how we move beyond the challenges and losses which are part of this, if we might do well not to leave behind three elements of who we are. Last Sunday, we explored how in the faith tradition, we are encouraged never to leave integrity behind. And next Sunday, Memorial Day weekend, we'll explore not leaving our well-being behind. Today, we explore the importance of not leaving behind our brokenness. The story from Numbers chapter 12 seems plain enough at one level. Miriam and Aaron talk negatively about their brother Moses. Miriam then contracts leprosy, which the culture generally believed is God's punishment for some sin. Miriam then is quarantined outside the main camp until she could be cleared to return to the larger non-quarantined community. So when Miriam is free from the quarantine, they all went forward together. This story is not intended to isolate Miriam as the sole source and cause of community relationship brokenness. The story is retold to help us explore how brokenness exists. Indicating that race and ethnicity lie at the beginning of the problem as experienced in that community long ago. Miriam and Aaron initially are irritated that Moses' new wife is a Moabite. She's from outside of their tribal boundaries. So they begin to complain about Moses' choice and the difference in his wife's background. It almost seems routine to complain about race mixing until Miriam's leprosy breaks out. Suddenly, her brokenness is identified. Get her to quarantine. Yet what about the brokenness of the community's own non-currently surfacing racial and ethnic resentments. Quarantine protocols are crucial when a disease is contagious. This incident 
develops with Miriam and Aaron resenting how their brother became involved in an inter-ethnic, inter-tribal, interracial marriage. Resentment of folks of other races, ethnic groups, genders, gender identification, education levels, economic levels, etc. Resentment based on any of that represents brokenness. And such brokenness is not overcome simply through an infectious disease quarantine. Why? Because actually we are all carriers of the brokenness virus. Although some of us seem asymptomatic much of the time. Can't we say that we all carry the virus, the sin of resentment, whether we acknowledge or prefer to ignore this fact? Back in 2018, David told the First Presbyterian Choir about his uh, personal experience of singing We Shall Overcome uh, in the context of First Presbyterian Church. Now, you may know that many choral directors in faith communities um, serve not only to help the choir hit the right notes, but they serve as theologians and evangelists and pastors. They share faith. They help the choir members interpret music so that the choir members not only present that interpretation faithfully, but so that they grow individually and collectively in faith. David and I had a conversation at that time about We Shall Overcome and how the two of us had both grown up thinking that this was a song of the civil rights movement rightly for the oppressed group primarily for African Americans, and that we shall overcome was mostly unrelated to white folks who tended to be, when you put the two together, the cultural resistors and the proponents of their own pushback based on a heritage of racist resentment. Yet David and I agreed then and, and I think continue to agree that this is a song which cannot be dismissed or isolated, um, left to any particular group or rejected by any particular group. And this story from Numbers chapter 12 absolutely substantiates our conclusion two years ago, in my opinion. In the wilderness, the Hebrew former slaves, now liberated from their slavery in Egypt, were yet slaves to brokenness. And the worst move they could make was to go off uh, down the road day after day with Miriam now out of quarantine, thinking that they had left their brokenness behind, that they were now well and healthy for keeps. We should never think this, though, about any experience of brokenness. If we do, personal and community experiences of brokenness will be for naught. It'll come back again, just as we are told COVID-19 can come back again. Historically, think about white folks who thought that Brown versus Board of Education uh, and, and that ruling could be mostly disregarded after it was first issued in the mid-1950s. Then, when desegregation orders were issued, uh, all of the states began to realize how the United States Supreme Court and the Justice Department were going to back up that ruling of Brown versus Board of Education. And people realized that our brokenness due to racial resentment could not be left behind on the desk of the Supreme Court clerks or justices. 
The processes of healing require remembering, acknowledging, evaluating, and changing. That's always the case. So beyond Brown versus Board of Education come in succeeding years the Civil Rights Act of 1957, the Civil Rights Act of 1960, the Civil Rights Act of 1964, and the Voting Rights Act of 1965. And every time in the years since when these are reviewed and debated for updating and extending, there are both citizens and elected public officials who are tempted to say, oh, we don't have that kind of brokenness anymore. Remember, we are all carriers of the brokenness virus. But some of us, many of us, all of us at times seem asymptomatic. And we prefer to consider ourselves cured. How shall we overcome our resentments and prejudices, our judgmental attitudes, and our desire to just flat out leave behind our brokenness? By being honest with ourselves in the clear light of God's diagnosis. That we are and we always will be carriers of brokenness in one form or another, which can break out any day or night with serious, deeply troubling, relationship-damaging consequences. So as a prayer and a reminder of our brokenness spiritually, societally, and interpersonally, David will lead us again this morning in singing, We Shall Overcome. As you sing where you are, mindful of how we are all carriers of the virus of brokenness. Equally remember that it is only God's love and passion and sacrifice and engagement plus God's sense of equity that will help us overcome day by day by day in any situation. We shall overcome. We shall walk hand in hand. We are not afraid. God will see us through. When the day comes that we sense we are somewhat moving on, friends, let us travel together continually remembering that our brokenness has not gone forever. We are simply asymptomatic for a time. Because brokenness can break out with the same or worse consequences. We are carriers of brokenness who are self-deceived any time that we think we can be rid of human brokenness. We are also, though, on the road toward healing, toward overcoming by way of God's grace, but only to the degree that we remember, acknowledge, and confess how our brokenness is ever with us. You know, though, what else is ever with us? God's help to overcome once more and once more and once more again. All honor and praise be to God. Would you join us now in singing hymn number 379, We Shall Overcome.
Friends, let us pray. How we thank you, O giver of goodness, for sunbeams and soft rain, for gentle breezes and flowers blooming, for simple joys and encouragement received. How we thank you for family members, acquaintances, and those unknown to us who give selflessly of themselves, even heroically and sacrificially. O oh, help of the helpless, our griefs and perplexities are many. In days when the stark choices seem to be between faith and fear, courage and cynicism, strength of character and collapse of life, help us always to choose better ways. Open us to behold opportunity where we struggle and to be challenged and not defeated by the troubles which beset us. In the spirit of all those who have lived and died before us in their serving you, receive our voices together, praying as Jesus taught, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Would you join us now in singing, Today We Are Called to Be Disciples. God, and may we live into the ways of God forevermore. May we do so in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord lift his countenance upon And give you peace and give.